Hi again, everybody. I'm Jamie Allison. This is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. This is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different niches, just people doing really interesting things in their space. Some things that we can hear a little bit about their journey and what they're doing and and see um, if we can apply some of those to our own lives as well. Um, Today, we're going to have a really good conversation um, that fits nicely with that kind of whole life success um, piece that we look at often. Just before we jump into that, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know we have a connection with Epitome Sportswear, um, and you also know that they, again, align with that kind of whole life success piece where it's not just performance kind of uh, uh, apparel, it's also just things that uh, you may uh, be able to comfortably wear when you um, go to your, your kid's soccer game, go hiking, um, all those things that, that people want to be able to do to, to kind of live a more full life. Um, the other thing that's important for them and is important to us as well is that they give back to the community they serve, so they are working to impact the inequities in opportunity for girls and women in sport. Um, For that reason, a portion of their profits go directly to organizations and initiatives that support um, girls in sport. So check them out. You can do that through our Instagram profile. Um, You can go directly through there and there's a discount code. Um, Or you can just go to epitome, E-P-I-T-O-M-E, sportswear.com and and, uh, hopefully you'll see something that works for you. I'm so really excited to have uh, Dr. Minnie Korroto with us today. She's a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in trauma, uh, stress-related disorders, um, including PTSD and anxiety disorders. But she's also a certified yoga instructor, a health educator, and mindfulness instructor. And she competes in fitness competitions and facilitates programs on health and wellness at retreats and things like that. So a real kind of broad thing. So first of all, thanks very much for taking the time with us today, Minnie. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Well, um, you know, I I guess the first bit, you can hear all of the things that you do and how diverse that is, but maybe um, um, before kind of we talk about how you spend time to help others with their kind of physical and mental wellness from that standpoint, um, I think people would be interested in knowing a bit about your personal journey from that perspective. And, and, you know, how did you get here yourself? Um, And maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't a straight line for you too. So maybe just talk a little bit about that and, and we'll start there. Yeah, it, it definitely was not a straight line for me. And um, so I'm originally from Northern California, from the Bay Area. That's where my family is. I, I live in San Diego now, which is about an hour flight south. Um, but my fitness journey really began when I first started grad school. And so I'm a, I was studying to be a psychologist and I was learning really quickly how important it is for me to be physically healthy and to be able to be there um, you know, to, to be my optimal self, like I had to really start paying attention to the way I was taking care of my body. Uh, prior to that, I was not taking the best care of myself. I had gone through some stressful situations in my personal life and I was, um, you know, just like not sleeping well. I was drinking alcohol with friends and just like not living the best lifestyle. Uh, But as I started my grad school journey and we were doing practicums and internships, I realized like in order, I am the tool, I am, you know, the, the, the service. And so I I need to make sure that I'm my best self. Otherwise I'm doing a disservice, not, not only to the, to them and also to myself. Uh, And so I started learning uh, about fitness and bodybuilding. My brother was a a competitor at the time. And so his friend started Uh, training me um, at his gym and uh, started teaching me about the lifestyle with nutrition and uh, and fitness and I got quickly you know really it really um, made a difference in not only how I was like like how I was looking like that's what was my initial thing like I just want to kind of look and and also feel better but like the emotional impact that it had on me it was just exponential and I just kind of took it from there. Um, so, and then I just also continued uh, with yoga instruction and just like physical fitness. I, I like being moving my body uh, to be like a, a great clinician. It just really all kind of went hand in hand for me. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you, how did you find that? I guess that um, once you did kind of pair that, um, you know, the physical stuff that you were doing at the same time as you were obviously learning about probably more of the the mental side of things, how did, how did you find that they complemented each other as you went through that? 
Yeah, I mean, there was it was so metaphorical um, because a lot of times, you know, when you're pushing heavy weight, you the self talk is so important. You know, the way you're you're telling yourself, "I can do one more rep," or "Let me just keep showing up." I'm tired today, but I know the hardest part is just getting through the door. And so that's that self motivation and the discipline that came with it. It really went hand in hand with the work that I was doing as a clinician, and so I felt myself uh, sharing a lot of the the metaphors um, with my patients and I still do today too like when I talk about you know like showing up and managing stress and managing their symptoms it's really about like just coming up coming and showing up and being consistent you don't have to be perfect but it's also just like can I just be here and just do the best that I can today and and see where it takes me yeah how do you how do you find that um you know, being able to draw on your own experiences as a clinician to be able, because I think a lot of people see a clinician as just kind of that professional and, and, you know, how do you, how do you incorporate using your own experience to be able to kind of maybe connect with people that way? Like, is, is that something that, you know, do you have to be careful with that or do you kind of, do you utilize that as you go through things to, to kind of make a, a relationship, I guess, from that end? Yeah, that also was a little bit of a hurdle or a journey for me um, yeah. because, Yes, as a, as a psychologist, you know, you do a lot of training on ethics and uh, the legal part of it and, and making sure it's all about the patient. And so you don't talk a lot about yourself. And, and I don't usually with my patients, but there is like a certain amount of disclosure that I feel is important so that people understand that I get it, that I, I've been, you know, I've, I've experienced trauma in my own life. I've experienced depressive symptoms in my own life. And if we, if I hide that, you know, it just feels a little bit, um, I feel like it's, there's a disconnect. And so, there's, um, so, and I, I really feel like it's important for me to be transparent about who I am and in order to fully do the work. Otherwise it feels a little bit dis, disconnected and removed. And so that was a little bit of a journey for me too. Like how much do I share uh, even on my social media like i was very private in the beginning and then i realized like no i just want to be my full authentic self and you know i'm i'm a psychologist but there's so much more to who i am and mm -hmm. if in all of us like we're just so complex as human beings and why just be one thing and, and be seen as one thing when in reality we can be many things and own all parts of ourselves. i don't have to just be one, you know, just my uh, career, I can, you know, that show that there's a lot of more to who I am. And I think it just gives permission to my patients and the people that I work with to be fully their, their authentic self. And it's just so liberating to be able to live that way. Yeah, it, it brings me to the the, the question I had around kind of expectations and maybe what I'm sure a lot of people you, you speak with and have even experienced yourself is that everybody has expectations, whether they're from society, from social media, maybe even parents, things like that. Um, you know, how did that shape your path and how does that impact what you do as well about, you know, kind of the expectation of what you should be or what you want to do and then maybe what you you really want to be internally? How, how has that kind of shaped yourself and your practice maybe even? Yeah, I think that that's a really great question. I really appreciate that because that that is really, I think, where it started. Um, so my family is originally from India, from Punjab. Mm -hmm. And so Indian Punjabi culture is very like a close knit community, but it, there are a lot of expectations on the family and the community on how we need to show up and who we need to be. And and as a, a daughter, as a sister, there's always these expectations like women shouldn't do this or girls can't do that and the life that you have to live. And so I was constantly feeling like I have to meet other people's expectations and I felt obligated to follow social rules and and customs and I was I was like I wasn't forced to do anything but it was also just you know out of respect it's not out of fear uh, and I think that's where there's sometimes sometimes people get get it convoluted like you're following everybody, you know, your parents or your community's rules because of fear, but it's really because you respect it and so you respect your family. So you still, you'd follow what they say. And then, you know, and then I went to school and grad school and, and the same thing. And I felt like I was just constantly being put in a box about like who, what I can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And then I just got 
or, you know, after I finished grad school, got licensed and continued my own journey, now I can be independent. And I still was feeling like reserved and feeling like I can't be my fully authentic self. And then I just questioned it, like, why not? You know, what, what, what's the big deal? I'm not doing anything wrong. And, I, and if anything, I think everybody should, you know, be fully themselves. And so why, and I, if I'm living in integrity and I have, I can have confidence in the way I'm showing up. So I don't feel like I, I feel guilty for the way I'm living my life. I know what I'm doing and I, so I don't have to have shame around it anymore. Um, so it's, it, it, I get just got, I literally just got tired of it. And I was just like, I'm just going to be myself. And, you know, if you like me, great. If not, that's okay too. Everybody's on their own journey. And I can't, I might disappoint people along the way. And we are sometimes going to disappoint people when we're changing or we're, even when we're making positive changes, people might have something to say. Mm -hmm. But as long as you feel like you're living a good life and yes, you're doing something healthy for yourself, it's, it, I feel like it's okay. And you'll find the right support, you know, when you do that. And now my family, like they're so supportive on everything that I do. They're, they're always there. Even when I do my fitness competitions, they show mm -hmm. up. Um, and so we're, we're very like close in that way. I don't feel like I have to hide any part of my life anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really powerful for, for people to hear too, because I'm sure there's many, many people in, um, that are, uh, that struggle with that w at whatever stage they are in their life as well. And, and something very similar uh, you know, the, one of the things that you do, um, that is unique, I think in many ways is that you, you often combine some of those, um, you know, your, your psychology practice, but also um, yoga, mindfulness, those, those things that are, are maybe, um, you know, uh, additional tools, I guess. Um, what's, uh, you know, how do you find that that, um, you know, uh, expands on, on what you're able to do for yourself, but also what you do for clients as well? Like, how, how do those things factor in together, I guess? Yeah, I mean, um, it it all go. It's always gone hand in hand for me. You know, when you think about like mind, body, soul. You know, the like how you're showing up, and and there's different ways to move your body, and you're really digging deep. Sometimes even when you're doing either a asana, like a physical yoga practice, or if you're doing physical movement, there are times where you it's past the physical limitations. You have to start digging a little bit deeper past your even your emotional self. It's like you 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 have to be spiritual in some ways, like believe in something and have faith that you can do things even when it's hard. And that takes a lot of insight and really mindfulness. And I think meditation has really helped me with that too, to have like a, 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 some guidance my and, and really touching uh, connecting with my wiser self, my inner guide at times where, where I felt lost or I felt like I was alone, that nobody gets it. I had to really start paying attention to, you know, some of the underlying beliefs that I have or something I was carrying. Um, and, and it's through my meditation practice where I even realized like one of the biggest barriers that I have, I've carried, you know, or the core belief that I've always had is that I'm a disappointment and I'm going to disappoint others. And that came through a Vipassana meditation. It was like a 10 day silent retreat I did one time. And, and I realized like we all have these core beliefs um, and some are negative or more self-critical. And a lot of our beliefs can be positive and, and optimal, and, but we all have both. And it's really about like how you're living your life is going to amplify one side or the other. And this is like exactly what I teach my patients. And so when I'm practicing these strategies myself, I feel like it gives more insight. And I, I, as a provider, can only guide somebody so far, but there's some things that we have to start accessing internally where you only you know what your deepest beliefs are and what you're still holding on to that might be holding you back or limiting you in some way. Yeah, this uh, that must be a very... Um emotional or impactful journey for some people is that um is that true i mean if if you're even if you're at retreats doing some of those things i would assume that's something where you know you you see some uh, and feel connected i guess with people in a very different way absolutely and that's why i love it too because it it can be very intimate um you know I, we did a 
Um, my friend and I did a um, like a four day workshop on yoga and stress management in Sedona oh. and it was, there were over 70 people in the room, but it was so intimate because people were able to open up and feel like they can be and share some meaningful stories and and you know I think that's what the world needs like there's so much disconnect and there's so people are lonely because we're not our authentic self and mm -hmm. it's not that we're not around people but we don't have community because we feel like we have to be guarded and we can't show up as our full self and but you know when I as you know as a provider as a, as a clinician can show up like you know this is who I am I felt like it, that opened up the space for others to do the same and that's really what it is for me you know to build community and so that the more you learn about yourself, then you can connect with others too. That, and you yeah. give them permission to be themselves as well when you do that. Yeah, I, I mean, you talk a lot. I, I've seen in, in your stuff a lot of uh, a lot about self awareness and the role that plays not just in um, in things like that, but also even just in your progress when you're you're doing kind of fitness work as well, and and how self awareness plays a, a huge role um, in that and happiness and and all of those pieces as well. Um, you know, how, how have you found that you've been able to, uh, cause some people maybe struggle with that a little bit and, and, you know, how are there ways to become more self-aware? Like some people maybe are a little more intuitive and do it automatically, but are there things that, that have worked for you to be able to be, make sure that you become a little more self-aware around those things? Yeah. I mean, um, you're right. Some people it's a, lo a little bit more accessible. It's easier. They are more self-aware and other people, they're not as emotionally intelligent. Uh, yeah. They haven't really learned the skills, but it's a skill at the end of the day. And I think you, when you're working with somebody that can help you to see that insight, you know, to call you like somebody, a trusted source. So even when I'm working with my patients, I'm very real with them and I can call them out on things, but in a loving and compassionate way. And we have to take accountability for ourselves too, because sometimes we blame, you know, people or situations for why we're feeling a certain way. Like they're, they're making me angry or that situation is why I feel the way I do, but it's all up to the way we're interpreting situations all the time. You know, situations in of themselves are always neutral events. Even we may agree that it's a catastrophic event because we have similar values and beliefs. But at the end of the day, it's really how are you interpreting your situation or your interactions with other people? How can you take accountability and realize like these are your thoughts, these are your beliefs and why you're feeling the way you are is because of your own perspective. And so can you examine some of those beliefs that you have and really start digging again a little bit deeper and saying like, okay, these are my beliefs and these are my rules. Where did I learn it? Why, why am I thinking this way? And that, that's where it can be helpful to work with a therapist um, to, that can help you with these things. I work from a cognitive behavioral therapy lens. So it's like really like digging to, towards your uh, your beliefs and your thinking patterns and being more self-aware through your cognitions and then also um, how you're coming off to other people, why they may be, why your experiences are they way, the way they are. Because it, we're, we're, always, we're, we're always contributing to our own circumstances in that way. Um, so even when people say like things like I, I keep having toxic relationships or I keep meeting the same type of guy over and over, what is it that you're bringing to that situation that may be contributing to you keep getting in these types of situations you know are you do you not have boundaries or you know or is the way you're communicating uh, so really paying attention to to all of that i think it's it could be really helpful working with a therapist yeah yeah well then it brings me to the other part that also fits in i think with the the um, fitness piece as well that, that you're obviously um big into um uh, you know you can progress a lot and then feel um, like, uh, you know, if you don't have the result you exactly want, um, that can sometimes be disappointing. And, you know, there are lots of people that, you know, uh, lose sight of the fact that they have progressed a lot just because of what, you know, maybe missing an outcome or something like that. So it's a little tied into goal setting and what you do from that perspective. But um, but maybe just you know, what are your thoughts around that? And and like, is it is it about how you set your goal or is it about how you perceive kind of success or not success um you know i'd be interested in hearing your thoughts there 
Yeah, that's another great question um, because I see it all the time. You know, when you're in a competitive sport, uh, a lot of times you can blame like it's so, you know, like when you're doing. So I do bikini bodybuilding, and it's a very subjective sport. So the judges are they they are assessing for like symmetry, muscle um, presentation, posing, and all of that. But at the end of the day, it is very subjective. So you can blame them and say, oh, well, you know, like they said it wrong or they did it wrong or it was like my coach or you can blame other people in the circumstances. But also, you know, is there, again, some opportunity to take some accountability? Like, can I can I could I have done anything different? And if sometimes there's nothing else that you can do and it's really accepting the situation for what it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like even at, at my last show, I didn't. I, I personally was disappointed in myself and I think I can be really hard on myself sometimes, but also it was, you know, like I, I know that I could have done a little bit better. I, um, I hadn't competed in a couple of years, so I like, I froze a little bit on stage. And so I was like, you know, I need to just practice my presentation and just being on stage. Cause I'm gen I'm usually pretty shy in person. And so being on stage and in a bikini, like it's, um, it's shocking to your nervous system if you haven't done it in a while. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I realized, okay, these are like the, the things I'm going to practice. And, you know, I, I made a list for my coach and my trainer for accountability too. Like, these are the things I'm going to be working on. And can you help me make sure that, you know, I'm working on these things. So with my trainer, you know, physique and spe specific training parts. And then with my coach, you know, with the dieting and, conditioning and things like that so you know so working as a team you're not just blaming it on one thing it's mm -hmm. like can we work collaboratively on on the goals that i have for myself uh, so are you uh because you've got a bunch of things happening i mean you're a you're an uh a, a you're a professional, obviously, from a psychology standpoint, but you're also, you know, you've, you're an entrepreneur because you do kind of additional things outside of that. You've got your fitness stuff. Um, how do you approach goal setting yourself? Like, are you one of those people who writes everything down and this is what I plan on doing? Or is it you take things as, as they come? How, how do you approach that yourself? I, I mean, I, I have specific goals, like long term goals that I'm working towards, but I always, you know, you want to break it down into manageable chunks so like what can i do today is, is and am i working towards that is what everything that i'm doing today getting me closer to that goal or is it taking me away from that goal so i do think it's important to write down your your long-term goals but also understanding if we're so focused just on the outcome it's going to feel that much further away so it's almost like you know as long as i'm navigated towards the right path and i know that i'm doing everything that i can today then it feels a lot more manageable. It doesn't feel like this overwhelming thing that I need to get to. And so I, that, I think that's where a lot of people end up failing because they feel like I'm not making the progress that I need. Um, I'm not there yet. And, and then they start comparing themselves to people who are already there, who've been working on their goals for a long time. Yep. But it really, again, it's an individual journey and you, only you know, am I doing everything that I can today to, to again get me closer to my goal yeah um, yeah so it's, it is that kind of breaking it down and being a little more kind of you know small step progress to to the larger goal then yeah absolutely yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's I feel like that's the only way I mean like even like school it, I was in school for 11 years you know <laughs> If I kept thinking, oh my God, this is going to take me 11 years to become, you get my doctorate and get licensed yeah. and all that, I probably would have quit, you know, the first quarter. Um, but I was just like, you know, again, focused on that day or that class. And, and then having, I always had like uh, classmates or a team that was working with me. And so that's the other important thing. I think when you have goals, you need a support network. So you need, you know, friends or colleagues or, you know, coach, teachers, mentors, mm -hmm that you're working with. So it doesn't feel like an isolated thing that you're working on all by yourself all the yeah. time. It, did you have, I mean, you talked about somebody helping you um, with coaching early on. Do you had, ha, have you had specific um, mentors as you've went along? Have they been kind of a, a variety of people depending on kind of what you're doing? How does, how does that work for you, Dr. Minnie? Yeah. Um, so in, I mean, in school, it was, I always had a couple, like my academic advisor who I'm still in touch with today, uh, he was like somebody that I could always go to, Dr. Vanu. He was just my my person that I felt like I could trust and be myself around. And he would always like 
walk me through situations and really support me on, you know, when I was struggling. Um, and then I had, you know, friends in school that was because it can be so hard. So you have to find, you know, your tribe really. And so I, I finished my graduate program. It was a five year program, um, but I finished it in four years and we finished a year early with, and there were only three of us in our cohort that did it. And because I think we were always studying together, we did it together. And so having, you know, people that you connect with and feeling like you're again, supported. So it, sometimes they're colleagues, sometimes, you know, your peers, and sometimes they are mentors that can help support you in that way. Uh, through my yoga journey, I had a master teacher as well, and I still do, uh, Dr. Chris Brems at Stanford, and then also um, Angela Norwood was my first teacher, and so they were master teachers, and they were very supportive, and so having, you know, I think professors and mentors that have already been through it is another um, important thing to, to have, and so if you don't have that, uh, in the beginning, like, even when I was making my changes, like, you know, they always say, like, you're the you're the five, or you're the, like, the average of the five yep. people you're around. Like, in the beginning, I didn't have that. Like, I didn't, I, there was, like, nobody in my life I wanted to be like, honestly, or that has, yeah. has the same goals. And so I was just listening to podcasts and, and, like, pretending almost like they're my friends or that I'm listening to conversations with my own friends. And I was reading, you know, a lot of, like, things on motivation and mindset and that that really helped propel me forward too. Uh, so even when I was doing like my training, my cardio, listening to podcasts uh, that were really uplifting and encouraging and I still do that today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and uh, so one of the things that is it, it's interesting is that um, um, you see a lot of people using some of um, so yoga is a good example. Yoga has been one that has really been, um, you know, taken on by athletes and entrepreneurs and things like that that seems to be easier when when people talk mindfulness there's i think it's become much more um you start to see a lot more of those people tapping into it but it also there's still that kind of group of people that it's okay mindfulness whatever you know um and and maybe not seeing kind of the power of that and and i'm just wondering you know why why do you think that is the way it is maybe and and have you seen that changing recently considering you're such you know you're so connected to that practice um so you know mindfulness and meditation obviously it's been around for thousands of years you know yeah. yoga has been around for five thousand years and i think it, it is cultural too you know in the beginning that people just thought it was like some woo woo thing and it's just like some new age thing that people do but now today i'm so grateful that there's some real science behind what's happening in the brain and the yeah. nervous system and that's really what i teach now so i'm when, as you mentioned before i do specialize in trauma stress and anxiety disorders but when you're doing practices like meditation and yoga mindfulness there are structural and functional changes that are happening in our brain and our nervous system that's helping us with focus and concentration learning memory and i think that's where a lot more people now have a buy-in to say okay like i know why i feel better why i can focus better or why i feel more grounded because these things are actually happening in in, in my brain and and my, and my nervous system and so i think that that's made it more accessible for people who are really into the hard science and i i'm both you know like i feel like i can i'm a very like faith-based but also like i that's why i went you know for my degree in in clinical psychology because i do care about the science and the neuroscience of you know these conditions and while I was in grad school, that's when I was learning a lot about um, how yoga and meditation help with things like depression and anxiety. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to teach my patients, you know, these types of strategies? And uh, so I actually got certified while I was in grad school and started teaching um, on campus first just to practice. So I was teaching my professors and teaching my the classmates. And then when I went on to uh, UT, I did my um, my sorry, my postdoc in Texas at the medical center. And so I was experiencing burnout myself and I brought it to the hospital. And so I started teaching the other psychiatrists and physicians and uh, the staff that we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves so that we can serve. And, and, and they were all for it, you know, like I thought, well, isn't it cool that today we can teach yoga in a hospital 
like 15, 20 years ago, that was, yeah. that would have been like unheard of, but now. And, and to the practitioners, not just to the, yeah. you know, to patients, I mean, to the practitioners themselves, that's pretty impressive. It's always been so important for me to like practice what I teach. So any recommendations that I'm making, I want to make sure that I'm doing it myself. You know, if you're not doing it yourself, why would your patients want to do it? Like, why would, it's like going to a trainer that's not fit. You know, if like, if you're not doing it yourself, why, well, why would I buy into what you have to say? And that was always really important to me to, um, to, you know, for, to practice what, what it is that I'm teaching to make sure that I'm doing it with integrity. And I, why, you know, if I'm offering this to you, it's because I truly believe it works. And I, I can share my own experience again of how it's working for me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, out, of, out of all of this stuff, they, they, people listening can probably hear and enter. Uh, we'll, in a couple of minutes, kind of give information so that they can find ways of being able to, to follow your stuff and everything, too, because it's really interesting. But maybe... Um, what would people, because obviously when you're, um, you know, they, they see you as, as Dr. Minnie and, and obviously all of those things, is there something that um, you think if people knew you, they might be surprised to know about you? Like, is there something that's, that's way, way different than what people might obviously think from what they know of you kind of on social media or whatever it happens to be? Um, I appreciate that question too, because I, I think, um confidence is something that i've honestly struggled with and i think on social media it can look like i'm very confident because i'm confident in what i'm teaching and you know when i'm trying to like share a skill or share you know some science behind like gratitude or something like that i i present as very confident but there are times where i struggle with my own confidence and my own self-worth like am i really worthy of teaching this thing do like what do i know and so sometimes imposter syndrome is something that happens for me and uh, so i constantly have to work on these things so cons confidence kind of goes like in waves for me you know it goes in intervals and sometimes when things are going well it's easy to be confident in in, in ourselves you know when we're succeeding at a goal but there's times where I'm not doing so great or, you know, my own patients are struggling and then I start feeling like I'm feeling like a dip in my own confidence. Like, am I, what do I, am I teaching the right things? And so doubt and, you know, self-worth is something that I still struggle with at times. So that I just, like, I know, you know, obviously like we can know the skills and the strategies, but it's really about being patient and compassionate with ourselves. And so I have to constantly remind myself that I'm, doing the best that I can and, you know, really focusing on, you know, my strengths and things that I've already done. And, um, and sometimes it's just going to be, a, you know, the day is just going to suck and you just kind of have to say, okay, well, you know, tomorrow will be better. And I'm just going to like take it easy and not do anything today. And, and so I give myself, you know, grace when I can on those days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. I mean, I think that's what makes you very accessible as well. I mean, it, it you know, the people see that um, you, you like anybody else struggle with similar things to what, uh, you know, anybody listening probably struggles with on uh, at any given time. So, um, so I think that's important for people to know. Um, so one of the things, I mean, we talked about that you really kind of um, uh, work on um, managing stress and things like that. So one of the things that we ask every um, person who comes on to do is, is maybe kind of leave a couple of tips with the audience. And, and there's lots of stuff we've already talked about, but maybe the one thing is just if, if people are in that kind of stressful situation, just are, are there a couple of things um, that, uh, that you could recommend that are uh, kind of quick and easy things that they could literally do right away that, that might help alleviate some of that? Um, you know, do you have a couple of tips or tools that they can use? Well, I mean, that could be a little bit different depending on what level of stress that you're experiencing mm -hmm. today, because sometimes they're life event stressors, you know, things that are more major, catastrophic. Yeah. And then there's micro stressors, which is like daily annoyances, relationship stress and things like that. So I, I would say, you know, like giving so creating a lifestyle where you have anchors in your life. And so, you know, it might just be one thing. And so you're having like a, a, you know, a fitness routine, some type of movement routine that you're practicing in your daily, in your weekly schedule. Um, rest is also very important. So sleep is overlooked and sleep is really the foundation of our health and well-being. And so making sure that you're getting adequate sleep. And so having a, a routine, like a morning routine or an evening routine 
uh, so that you have some boundaries around your rest and your productivity. And so, and then the third thing is really learning to communicate your needs. And, you know, what is it that you need from your partner or how can somebody support you? If they don't know what your needs are, no one's gonna really understand how to support you. And so being okay that we all have needs and it, it doesn't mean you're a needy person, right? Everybody, it's part of the human experience that we all have needs. You know, there's times where we need more support and there's times we need less, but being able to communicate that is really important. And, and that's, again, it's a practice, it's a skill. And so sometimes we're very passive in our life. We don't ask for what we need. Um, but, you know, again, working with somebody like a, a therapist or, you know, a friend, that can help you assert yourself and you can be assertive and compassionate together too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Great. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure people want to hear lots more and, and find out more about kind of you and, and uh, um, you know, if, if people are listening and thinking, wow, that that's, that's a great tool, but also maybe I, I just want to kind of see more and maybe hear more from, from what you're doing. What are some of the best ways to, to follow you, Dr. Minnie, and, and maybe kind of access some of those things? Absolutely. Um, so I'm on I, my website is drmini.co. So D R M I N I dot C O. And it's the same for my Instagram. On my website, I do have a monthly newsletter and a blog. Those are free resources. And I'm, I'm creating some more free resources to hand out uh, to download on my website. Um, but also, you can always connect with me if you ever have any questions. I have an Ask Dr. Mini. Um, stories thing that I do on my Instagram on Wednesday. So if you ever have a question, you can submit a question and I can answer it anonymously. Uh, but even in general, I, I enjoy helping people. And so if you ever have a question, you can just message me. Great. Well, again, I'm, I'm sure lots of people will be looking into that and, and great that there's some resources for them right away as well. So um, so thank you for that. And, and again, um, share tons and tons of tons of great stuff. So really, really appreciate you spending the time with us. And, um, you know, I, again, um, thank you for, for everything today. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much too, for your time and for this podcast, this great work. Okay. Well, well, thank you. And, uh, uh, to everybody else, if you haven't hit subscribe on the podcast, do that now because we have great people, uh, every week. And, uh, again, we will talk uh, soon on big idea, big moves. Wow.